Thank you so much for joining us for CBN News. Watch MF from Graham ahead today. Power outages and storm surges continue in the aftermath of Hurricane Adalia. We've got details coming up. Plus, we share the story of a North Korean who fled the country in a bold fight for freedom. I escaped North Korea with no leg and no left hand. The fact that I came to freedom on crutches made the whole world aware of how strong the will of human beings is to yearn for freedom. Then later, she's one of the youngest basketball head coaches in the country, and she is not ashamed to praise God publicly. I want to be a leader that shows my players that if you're going to do something, you need to do it the absolute best that you can. All these stories and more coming up next from the CBN Newsroom. This is CBN News Watch. We begin this half hour with residents along the East Coast from Florida to North Carolina assessing damage and digging out today in the aftermath of Hurricane Adalia. Power outages and storm surges remain an issue two days after the passing of the devastating Category 3 storm. Gary Lane brings us the latest in our top story. People in parts of Florida and the Southeast are working to rebuild their lives after the devastation of Hurricane Idalia. Austin Buddy Ellison lost his family shrimp farm and horseshoe. It was heartbreaking. She had many tears. And just thank God nobody died. What matters is what I'm holding right here, okay? It's just material stuff. I know. It's just so hard. Retirement, our own life. It's material. Years. We're going to rebuild. 23 years. It's going to make it. It's going to be good. It's going to be fun. Storm surge as high as seven feet or more remains a problem in some areas as residents wait for floodwaters to recede. In Whiteville, North Carolina, this hair salon owner had to be rescued from her business when the waters came in. I started crying. I've been there 30 years, but um, I had no idea it was going to be this bad. I worked till about seven last night and um, wasn't really prepared for a flood like this. And in Cedar Key, Florida. Cedar Key, we need a little bit of help right now. Some of the residents have lost their homes. People have lost their businesses, their livelihood. We need a little bit of help. And it's going to take a little bit of time to rebuild, but we'll rebuild. President Biden is set to travel to Florida on Saturday to assess damages there. Governor Ron DeSantis says so far power has been restored to more than 400,000 Florida homes and businesses. And unlike last year's Hurricane Ian, this hurricane hit a less densely populated area, but still caused an estimated $9 billion in damages. There was definitely a lot of destruction, but it was so much debris and so much uh, woods, and that's just going to require a lot to be able to, to, to clean all that up. Meanwhile, CBN's Operation Blessing arrived in the region, finding that they had to maneuver around road debris and blockages. People are blocked in, in their neighborhoods. People are blocked in on other parts of uh, Georgia and Florida. So currently we will be trying to get past some of these road closures and road blockages to get to the, the hardest hit areas. This weekend, OB volunteers will begin cleanup efforts and lunchtime meals will be served to the community in Homosassa, Florida. Gary Lane, CBN News. And you can learn more about Operation Blessings Relief Work and how you can help by visiting OB.org. A stunning op-ed from the American College of Obstetricians and Gynecologists announcing support for, quote, no limit abortions up to birth. In a Washington Post op-ed Thursday, the American College of OBGYN and Society of Family Planning called for abortion on demand at any time for any reason, stating that abortions, quote, must be available without restrictions, without limitations, and without barriers. The statement was in response to another Washington Post op-ed by pro-life strategists pushing for Republican presidential candidates to be more outspoken on abortion. In Tennessee, state lawmakers ended a special session Tuesday on gun laws spurred by the deadly shooting in March at a Nashville Christian school. While Republican-led state house did pass a few measures, critics argued they didn't go far enough to prevent such a tragedy from happening again. Our Charlene Aaron is on this story. Protesters at the Tennessee State House voiced frustration and anger as lawmakers abruptly concluded the special session on public safety with little significant action. They saw the bodies. Kids. Massacred by high capacity. Automatic rifles. Do you know 
what that does to a child's body? Because the nine-year-olds know what it does to a child's body. Republican Governor Bill Lee called the session in response to the Covenant Christian School shooting, which left three children and three adults dead. Despite protests, the governor expressed a hopeful outcome. Four of our bills passed. Significant funding uh, was focused on issues that matter to public safety, improved the background check system, uh, attacked human trafficking, made access for safe, safe storage. We funded mental health uh, resources across the state. We made progress. Sarah Shoup Newman's six-year-old son is a student at the school. She told CBN News he and other students have been left traumatized. We are watching our families with friends, with kids, and, you know, especially the third grade and the kids upstairs that are just reeling in trauma. Their childhoods are just ripped apart. There's pieces of those kids will never get back, not to mention all the families that forever lost their children. Newman, who helped start the nonprofit Covenant Families for Brighter Tomorrows, is disappointed lawmakers didn't do more to protect students from potential future gun violence. For months, her group rallied for better gun storage measures and extreme risk protection orders, also known as red flag laws. In the end, the Republican supermajority couldn't muster enough support to even debate the idea. There are some that you know, either refused or just don't see it as an urgent action. And we just can't understand that. You know, this this is urgent. This is, you know, a, a public health crisis. As the week-long debate played out, tempers flared, leading to a brief physical confrontation between GOP House Speaker Cameron Sexton and Democrat Representative Justin Pearson, one of two state lawmakers expelled earlier this year. The two accused each other of shoving within moments of the House chamber adjourning the special session. And he started to yell and scream as though we had done something. Representative Jones was pushed by uh, Representative Sapicki as well for holding signs and demanding that we protect kids and not guns. Uh, security put their hand on the back, which knocked me forward. And I think, I can't remember, there's a photographer when you look at it that was to my left. And so we moved right. And then at that point, we keep walking and, and then... Yeah, Representative Pearson that comes in and pops me from the right side. Meanwhile, Newman applauds lawmakers who stood with Covenant parents as they continue fighting for greater school safety, even if that means voting those who refuse to change out of office. If they are not able to do that in a way that represents the people, they do not deserve to have their seats. Charlene Aaron, CBN News. The U.S. Surgeon General says loneliness, loneliness is now a public health threat so severe that it is on par with smoking and obesity. CBN medical reporter Lori Johnson explains why it's become so widespread and how we can begin to reconnect with others. America's top doctor sees loneliness as a painful secret affecting far too many Americans, including himself. Because this is an issue so many people struggle with in the shadows and they don't talk about their loneliness because they feel ashamed. And that was true for me as well. Like many others, Dr. Vivek Murthy experienced it as a child and again as an adult. It was my wife, Alice, who stepped in and said, hey, I'm worried about you because you're not reaching out to people. You're not socializing with your friends. Research shows loneliness increases the risk of physical ailments like heart disease, dementia, and stroke, plus mental ones including depression, anxiety, and suicide. Doctors find the possibility of premature death due to loneliness could equal that of smoking 15 cigarettes a day and greater than living with obesity. New surveys show as many as half of adults are struggling with loneliness and even greater numbers of children are. That may seem surprising since children appear to be connecting with each other on these things all the time. Technology, however, serves as a poor substitute for in-person connection, experts are learning. I actually believe we're on the beginning uh, of a tidal wave of brain and mental health problems in young people. And it's because we're just more disconnected than ever before, disconnected from our own families because when people are together, their faces are buried in their gadgets. 
Psychiatrist Daniel Amen blames the pandemic for making this problem exponentially worse. He believes we can turn things around by cutting back on screen time and returning to in-person activities. So it's back to church. Go back to church. Get involved. Get involved with groups. We have to go back. We need to come together to solve it. And, and really, no better place to solve it than a church. Dr. Amen also believes the government should put more resources into hiring and training mental health professionals so they're more accessible and affordable. Lori Johnson, CBN News. Coming up, see one man's fight to freedom after escaping the North Korean regime. Stay with us. You're watching CBN News Watch. Hi, I'm Terry Mewson, and I'm here to tell you how the CBN animated Bible series Superbook is transforming the lives of millions of children around the world. Your help is urgently needed because it's during these critical years of childhood that most people make their lifelong decision to follow Jesus. Because of Superbook, I've come to know God. You can be part of this critical mission with a gift of any amount. Go to cbn.com forward slash share the gospel. Welcome back to CBN News Watch. An estimated 34,000 defectors have made the life or death flight from freedom to freedom from, by crossing from North to South Korea. As Chris Mitchell reports from Seoul, one defector has become the number one target of the North Korean regime. Behind me is the Parliament of South Korea. One member of the legislature made a remarkable and miraculous journey from being a child beggar in North Korea to a member of South Korea's parliament. CBN News met with that legislator, Ji Sung-ho, who now has an ambitious goal. My hope as a member of the National Assembly is for the North Korean regime to collapse so that North Koreans can enjoy freedom and believe in God. I want to dedicate myself to the creation of such freedom and unity. Sung-ho showed us a painting of a kutsebi, what they call a child beggar in North Korea and how he survived as a child when millions starved to death. At age 14, he lost his leg and hand in an accident. And at the age of 24, Sung Ho fled to freedom. I escaped North Korea with no leg and no left hand. I swam the Tumen River to avoid the eyes of the North Korean soldiers. I walked 6,000 kilometers to China, Laos, Myanmar, and Thailand, and turned around 10,000 kilometers to reach South Korea. The fact that I came to freedom on crutches made the whole world aware of how strong the will of human beings is to yearn for freedom. In China, Sung Ho heard the gospel and became a Christian. And when he came to South Korea, it was like a dream. Everything I thought of, dreamt of, and prayed for came true. For example, the dream of wanting to eat a full meal, such as chicken, has come true. And I had the dream of walking the world once again. When I came to South Korea, the government gave me a new prosthetic leg and arm, so I was able to walk again. President Trump honored Sung Ho during the 2018 State of the Union Address. Because of his high profile, North Korea has named him their number one target. He says countries should pressure China not to extradite defectors back to North Korea, where they then face death or life as political prisoners. People imprisoned in North Korean political prison camps are treated as animals, not people. And everybody in North Korea are well aware of this. Sung Ho now serves as an advocate for human rights and the 34,000 defectors in South Korea. His role model is Martin Luther King, and this former beggar child now meets with world leaders. My message is that North Koreans have the right to live in freedom, and those who live in a free democracy have a responsibility to save those who are imprisoned and dying. They have a responsibility to make sure that even those who are starving to death live and enjoy the freedom we enjoy. Despite the current situation, Sung Ho believes reunification is possible. I don't think it's impossible. 
because it's clear that North Korea is a dictatorship, and I don't know of any dictatorship in history that has lasted forever. Furthermore, I have the idea that politics should be carried out from a long-term perspective so that free democracy and the gospel can be preached to North Koreans and integration can be achieved after unification. Sung Ho asks Christians around the world to pray. I believe that the gospel entering North Korea and the collapse of the North Korean system depends not on human efforts, but on God's hand. I would appreciate it if you would join us in prayer so that we can reunify as a free and democratic nation. Chris Mitchell, CBN News, Seoul, South Korea. Still ahead in her first season, Coach Jackie Hoyt led the Oklahoma State women's basketball team to the NCAA tournament. Watch how this fierce competitor gives God all the glory. We've got the story when we come back. Working hard and treating people really well, that is how Jackie Hoyt is chasing greatness. She's already making her mark in college basketball as one of the youngest head coaches in the country. Sports reporter Will Dawson talked to Jackie about what makes this fierce competitor totally unashamed of publicly praising God. I'm going to play in a game, then I'm going to play it the best I can, and that means that I want to win and I want to beat you. <laughs> Last season, Oklahoma State's women's basketball coach, J.C. Hoyt, led the Cowgirls to the NCAA tournament in just her first season as head coach. Why do you think winning is so important to you? I feel that God just put this competitive spirit in my heart. And I want to be a leader that shows my players that if you're going to do something, you need to do it the absolute best that you can. JC comes from a competitive family. Her mother, Shelly, is one of Kansas's all-time winningest high school basketball coaches. In fact, JC played for her mother and was a three-time All-State player in both volleyball and basketball. She was named captain and excelled as a point guard at Wichita State, in spite of suffering multiple significant injuries in both knees. Did you tear your ACL four times? Yeah. Recovering from injuries, rehabbing from injuries can be grueling both physically and mentally. What did it teach you about yourself? Oh gosh, it's, it taught me so much. Um... I mean, I don't know that I would be sitting here as a coach if I didn't go through those injuries. To be very honest, I can't tell you that I really knew who I was without basketball. And so I would say my freshman year in college, God just really kind of brought me to my knees and I had nowhere to look but up. And uh, I think that's really when the biggest transformation for me started. JC credits her coach at Wichita State, Jane Albright, for modeling a godly example. When I reflect on my life, the two most impactful people were my mom, then the, the second one being the college coach. I saw the way that she led when things were hard, when things were going well. Um, and so just to you know, be able to have those two women in particular, I am so thankful um, because they showed me exactly who I wanna be and how I wanna go about coaching and, and impacting others. In 2017, JC took her first head coaching position at the University of Missouri, Kansas City. In 2020, she led the Ruse to the school's first ever conference championship, only to have the NCAA tournament canceled due to COVID. That was one of the hardest things that I've ever gone through. It was like, we finally got it. And then boom, it was stripped from us. And we really had nothing to show for it, you know, by playing in in the NCAA tournament. That's probably the hardest conversation I've ever had as a coach is to look them in the face and tell them, I'm sorry, it's over. But, you know, looking back, oh my gosh, God was working and orchestrating things in my life that I had no idea. For a fierce competitor like JC, chasing greatness means new challenges must be met and conquered. In 2022, she accepted the coaching position at Oklahoma State making her one of the youngest head coaches in the country. It's a testament, I think, to working really hard and treating people really well, but I didn't get here on my own. I had so many people pour into me, and so I'm so grateful for that. And I'm very passionate about, you know, making the most of this opportunity and um, giving back to the game and, and pouring into the lives of my players the exact same way that I was poured into. During the season, the Cowgirls beat their rival, Baylor, for the first time in more than seven years. After the game, J.C. couldn't help but praise God. 
I promise that I will give God the glory in that moment. So we're gonna pray right now, okay? Because he is working, he is on the move as Oklahoma State right now, and we're gonna give it back to him and then we can celebrate a little bit more and get ready, okay? Father God, uh, we just thank you so much for all the great things that you are doing in this program right now. Uh, and I remember taking a, a prayer walk that day and just praying, God, help me to give you the glory no matter what the results are. If we lose, help me to continue to trust and, and give that back to you. And if we win, then don't let me forget and let me give it back to you in that moment. And after the game, I just was reminded of that and uh, that kind of conversation that I had that day with, with God. And, and for me as a believer, it's important that I you know, show them that I'm gonna be unapologetic about that. Though the team lost in the first round of the NCAA tournament, JC knows she's just getting started, building a powerhouse program in women's college basketball while making a positive impact on her players. My mission is to make Oklahoma State women's basketball, you know, in that upper echelon of teams that are talked about. Because I, th I think it can be done, I really do. But ultimately, I want my players just to know how much I love them and I'm gonna fight for them. I really try and measure my success by the lives that I feel like I've impacted and just, you know, maybe plant a seed or um, show them the love of Christ, even though they might not ever know that's what actually, you know, my intent was. We're coaching and using our platform to help others know the kingdom and bring them to the kingdom. Time now for your Friday faithful, and today I leave you with this thought as we wrap the week. In God, there is no failure. He can't fail. He cannot lie. He is perfection, and in Jesus, he is perfection personified. With this faithful truth, make this a fabulous Friday, and be sure to have yourself a wonderful weekend. That is going to do it for this edition of CBN News. Watch and remind you, you can always find more of our programs on the CBN News channel. You can find them there at any time as well as at CBNNews.com. We'd love to know what you think about the stories you've seen here today or any day. You can email us the address, newswatch at CBN.com. And of course, you can reach out and touch us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. We certainly would love to hear from you. Thank you so much for joining us. We'll see you back here come Monday. Goodbye and God bless.